Come, come whoever you are, wanderer, worshiper, lover of leaving, it doesn't matter. Ours is not a caravan of despair. Come even if you have broken your vows a thousand times. Come yet again, come, come. Rumi's quote resonates today as we celebrate Pentecost. We beckon the Holy Spirit to come as promised. Today is the day when Christians around the world celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit. And Pentecost is a culmination of 50 days of celebration. Jesus, his followers received the promised gift of the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, kindle in us the fire of your love. On this Pentecost Sunday, we continue our journey in the Old Testament. And it just so happens, 50 days after Passover, the book of Ruth in the Jewish tradition. Ruth is a symbol of loyalty and devotion. We can find the Holy Spirit there too. In the Old Testament, wind can connote the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit shows up in Genesis 1-2. The earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. And we find the Holy Spirit in Psalms. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Come, Holy Spirit, kindle in us the fire of your love. What I love about both of these texts is that they're dialogue, and we don't get dialogue very often. I love how they're talking to one another, and we can have a peek into their lives. What, what was it like for them? And we know that that's how we build relationships is through we don't have monologues with everybody and wait to not we don't stop and say oh i talked so we're not going to have a conversation here it feels like the bible could be like that sometimes there's loyalty and honesty and love illustrated in ruth's words to naomi do not press me to leave you or to turn back from following you where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God, my God. What do we learn about Ruth and Naomi from their dialogue? We learn Ruth is an Israelite, isn't an Israelite. We learn she's loyal. We learn that she trusts her relationship with her mother-in-law. We learn that Naomi is in despair. She believes she has lost her worth and is useless for her daughters-in-law. They trust one another. They are vulnerable and authentic. They do not hold back from one another. They talk the way in which they feel. In Samuel, we hear God talk to Samuel, and Samuel responds when, when the Lord calls, but it takes a little bit. God calls Samuel, Samuel, and Samuel runs all over the place, goes to Eli and says, you called me? And he's like, no, I didn't call you. You go lay down. And God calls again, Samuel. And he runs to Eli. Eli is a man who knows God and doesn't know that God is calling until the third time. I think that's just like us. God calls all the time. And we know God. And yet, Sometimes we don't understand. We might not be listening. We might be too involved in what we're doing. Or we might hear God, and we might decide, mm, no, I can't do that, God. There is no way I'm going to seminary. Poor God has heard that so many times from me. <laughs> he hears it all the time from me, actually. What I really love about the Samuel passage is this one verse. Now Samuel did not know yet the Lord, and the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. God talks to those who don't know God. God talks to those who know God. God talks to those who think they know God, not sure who God is, not sure if they're worthy enough for God to like them or not, or love them. God talks to God's people 
all of God's people. And what I love when Eli finds out that God is calling, when he says to Samuel, go back, and if the Lord calls you again, say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Are we able to hear that call? I ignore the call once in a while. It kind of pushes me. And I know why that I, I don't answer the call. It's because my stuff gets in the way. My story, I could not join the seminary until I had dove deep into my own story and learned that God had already forgiven everything that was in my story. That is when we can forgive others. That is when we can take God's call. We must go back and reconcile our own story. And God works there. We don't do it alone. We can't just say, oh, I forgive. God gives us that. If we're unable to free ourselves, forgive ourselves through our own story, how will we ever be able to have open and honest communication with one another, like Ruth did? Ruth demonstrates worthiness. She does not give up on her mother-in-law. She is open to receive God. You, God, are my God. And what about Samuel? He doesn't know the Lord, doesn't know it's the Lord calling. But we know he answers his call. We cannot accept our call before we forgive ourselves. We know that Ruth and Samuel must have done some work on themselves through their story. We don't know how she did it because we don't get to learn that about her. But to be able to trust her mother-in-law's God, that is really powerful. She was raised in a culture of many gods. If that's not God's work, I don't know what God's work is. When we focus or get caught up in our own stuff, when we get caught in what's going on in our day, are we worthy? What is going on with us? We're paying attention to other things. It's not about us. It's about what God does. And it's always been about what God does. God calls all of God's children back to God over and over again. God does not give up on you. God will not leave you. God will continue to push you, call you, and love you, no matter how many times you have broken your vows, even if you're a lover of leaving, even if you believe you're unworthy, Come back to God. Come. Yet again, come. God reveals God's love through our families, through our friends, through the stranger who greets us with a smile. God reveals God's self to you all the time. We are not too broken for God. God longs to be in relationship with you. Our God is a big God. We cannot even imagine how expansive God is. God believes you are worthy of God's love. You, you are worthy of God's love. You don't have to do anything for it. You don't climb a ladder. You don't check off the boxes if you've done what the laws say or not. Frankly, I, I, I don't obey the laws very well sometimes. Rules, I get caught up in rules as well. I am sure you guys get caught up in rules at times. Ones that you find that are kind of like, why is that rule in place? That just cannot be. That excludes all people that I know. I get really passionate about that. That's something I'm working on. Our God can take anything that we can give him. If we're angry, God knows what anger is. He's been plenty angry so many times. And us being angry at God, us yelling at God, 
us saying, God, why have you done this to me? God gets it. God's been there. Our God has come here and lived as a human being because he knew that we could not do it. We cannot live by the commandments. We cannot love our neighbor as ourselves. We cannot love God as God wants us to love God. But God changed that for all of us when he hung him on the cross and died for us. He died to bring the kingdom into now. We are living with God right now. We don't have to get stuck. We don't have to get stuck like Naomi was in her thinking that she had no value because she couldn't produce children, because she didn't have a husband. Thanks be to God we don't live in that society and that culture anymore. Thanks be to God that everyone is of value all the time. And we hear Naomi blaming God. She said, God has dealt me this hard blow. But what is God doing? Is God really dealing with her in a harsh way? He's given her Ruth. He's put a person who doesn't know God right there and is working through her, for her, building a better relationship between them so they both can follow God. What I love is how Ruth embraced and held on to Naomi, how she just grabbed a hold of her and said, you know, I'm not going to go. And I believe that's what God does with us every day. No matter what we do, no matter what we think, no matter what we say, God grabs onto us and says, I will not let you go. I love you. God promises not even death will separate us. God will never leave us. Give over your fears and your burdens and your despair to God. Share your joys, your love, the grace you received with God. Give everything to God. But if you're carrying something that you're really tired of carrying and it's way too heavy for you, when you come up today for communion, just drop it off at the altar and leave it there. Walk out lighter. God will take it from you. God invites us to come Come whoever you are, wanderer, worshiper, lover of leaving. It doesn't matter. Ours is not a caravan of despair. Come even if you have broken your vow a thousand times. Come yet again. Come. <laughs>